Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Eduardo, uh, and I work as an education specialist in, uh, in uh, Jordan with UNICEF. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Oske, for inviting me to do this presentation. Uh, I'm going to do the presentation in English. It will be subtitled, and then we'll have a session on questions and answers. Uh, unfortunately, I don't speak Turkish. I have to apologize. Uh, to all of you, but uh, hopefully with the translation and with uh, Dr. Oske facilitation, we can have as many questions and as interactive as possible. I will try to do my presentation uh, quite short, so we have time to real interaction uh, between all of us. Okay, let me share my, my presentation with you all, and uh, we will uh, move from there, yeah? Oske, can you see the? Yes. Okay, terrific. Let me do it this way then. So what uh, today I wanted to have a little conversation and hopefully as, uh, as I explained to you, to have it as interactive as possible, to talk a little bit about the uh, development of the brain on the very early years, which uh, is the very basis of the reason why you all are working in early childhood development. And uh, I gave this title to the presentation, The Wonders of the Human Brain from Conception, because we are now amazed to have so much information uh, after many, many, many decades of research and the combination of several science that give us a little bit of an entry on what is happening in the human brain in the very early years of life and how this is going is, is, the, is the factor, the basis of our whole life and who we are as human beings. Uh, what, what I'm going to give you is basically hundreds of years of research on uh, the human development and different sciences, such as neuroscience, education, sociology, psychodevelopment, and giving to you everything hundreds of years in a short presentation of 20 minutes. So I'm going to do almost an impossible, have, I have an impossible task in front of me on how to apply all this, uh, all this research. And I'm going to do it even more concise and giving you just four simple messages that explains why it's so fundamental that we pay attention to the very early years of life. So all summing up, sum up in just four messages. What we know is that the life is a continuum from the moment we are conceived to all our life, during all our life course, but that there are moments that are quite essential on the construction of us as human beings. And I will say those very important moments are from the preconception to birth, from birth when we are born for around, with around 100 billion neurons in our body, from birth to age of three, so those um, two, three, so those really, uh, like uh, some people talk about the first 1,000 days of life in which uh, the human being develops the maximum synaptical connectivity. Sorry for being a little bit, uh, a bit technical there, but basically where it happens the maximum connectivity of the brain that is created by the interaction with the environment, by the communication with our parents, with our caregivers, with the, with the uh, daycare centers that uh, uh, we are in, or those very early years of life. By the age of three, we are going to have in our brain the maximum connectivity of the brain. In fact, it is 10 times the whole connectivity of the whole internet at this moment in the, in, in the world. And then from year three, year, around the year three, to when we enter preschool, and there is a moment that is very interesting because what it happens is uh, there is a reduction of the numbers of connections of the brain. There is a lot of what we call pruning, which is uh, the brain becomes much more selective and specialized. By the time we enter primary school, a lot of the trends of our personality, our basis and fundamental uh, and foundations to learn are already set up. I am not a, a determinist. I'm not going to say that everything is determined by the age of six, 
but a lot of what we are is going to be already shaped by the time we enter in preschool. My four message of early childhood uh, <laughs> development or early childhood education. The first message is very, um, very simple. And oh, I think I went down. And it's that DNA is not our destiny. In fact, the DNA can be altered by the environment in which we are born and how we interact with others. But what we know is that the, the, the um, genetic information we are born with is going to be very much shaped in the very early years of, of life because of the environments where we are going to develop. Obviously, the most important, the important relation in our, in our life is going to be with our primary caregivers, with the people who are, we, are going, we are going to develop a bond with. And when I say an attachment, I'm not talking about an email attachment. Obviously, it is a little bit much more technical than that. We are human beings are mammals. And mammals, to be able to develop, they need a very close interaction, a social interaction with, um, with few people that are going to have total trust with. Usually are the parents, it could be the mother or the father, it could be also an adult figure or several adult figures like siblings or grandparents, for example, that are going to be the main interaction that is going to make possible the brain to develop. So, we are born with a, an amount of uh, genetical capacities and possibilities that are going to be, but they are not our destiny. We are not just, uh, it's, not, it's not that simple as that. It's going to, be, to develop according with the possibilities that the environment that is around us are going to allow us. And I will say, and this is going to, to sound a little bit, um, a little bit uh, hitch or, or, or silly, but I will say the ingredient that is going to help the brain, the neurons in the brain to, in, to increase the connectivity is going to be affection, it's going to be love, it's going to be con uh, physical contact, it's going to be those interactions, those cues that, um, that we give to the, to, the, to the young kid. In fact, uh, the later research says that um, every second, every second in the life of a, of a baby and a toddler, uh, the number of the connections in the brain can increase. Uh, the new connections can be from 750, 750 to 1 million new connections per second in the life of a kid, of a, of a baby or of a toddler, which is absolutely incredible. And it will never happen again in the rest of the life of a human being. I want to show you a little video. Let's see how this works uh, of how the, uh, the, the, that connectivity in the brain on the early years work. Let's see if this is going to, uh, to work. It's a very simple video that will uh, help you. Uh, uh, and Dr. Oskar, if you tell me if that you can see it. Uh, for showing a video, you should uh, stop sharing screen. Oh, and then, um, yeah, okay. you, you need to share okay. screen again with the video. Me. Okay, let's do that. I can see that, terrific. Perfect. I'm seeing right now. Now you see us. Okay. Let's. Uh, I can't hear you. It's very slow. Could you please volume up? During this important period of brain development, billions of brain cells spread neurons that send electrical signals to communicate with each other. These connections form circuits that become the basic foundation of the brain architecture. Circuits and connections proliferate at a rapid pace and are reinforced through repeated use. Our experiences and environment dictate which circuits and connections get more use. Connections that are used more grow stronger and more permanent. Meanwhile, connections that are used less fade away through a normal process called pruning. 
Well used circuits create lightning fast pathways for newer students to travel across regions of Japan. Simple circuits form first, providing the foundation for more complex circuits to build on later. Through this process, neurons form strong circuits and connections for emotions, motor skills, behavioral control, logic, language, and memory during the early critical period of development. With repeated use, these circuits become more efficient and connect to other areas of the brain more rapidly. While they originate in specific areas of the brain, the circuits are interconnected. You can't have one type of skill without the others to support it. Like building a house, everything is connected, and what comes first forms a foundation for all that comes later. Okay. Yeah, I was the the volume okay? Otherwise, this is going to be subtitled, right? For your for your um, um, yes, mm -hmm. your participants. Uh, so let let me see. Let me show you here in in this uh, in this slide how it works in the brain. When uh, in the during gestation, when you are in your mommy's belly, uh, the neurons are formed. And they are formed at around 350,000 uh, from the month three, I think it is around 350,000 new neurons every minute. So when we are born, we are born with around, as I said, it's around like 100, usually we, have, we said 100 billion neurons in our body, but they, they are not very much interconnected. So the connectivity of the synapses of the, of the neurons in the brain, it starts accelerating thanks to the interaction with the external world through the talking to the parents, through the, through the contact, through, the, through those little um, uh, interactions with the baby. And it accelerates in, a, in an amazing way until the year two, the year three, which uh, the connection of, of those 100, 000, 100, sorry, 100 billion neurons are at its maximum connectivity. From year two, year three, the connection started reducing, not because the, the children are becoming less smart, or less intelligent or something of that sort, but, but something much more subtle than that, which it becomes is the brain becomes much more uh, specialized. And uh, from 10 times the connectivity of the whole internet in the brain of a baby goes down to around three times the all connectivity of the internet in just one brain, which is more or less the connectivity that we maintain um, when, become, when we become adults. The second, uh, the second message I have for you is that the interventions um, are uh, better, uh, the sooner the better. It's better to intervene with younger kids. Uh, it's better to, uh, to develop the brain uh, soon. Uh, the reason why is because there is a window of opportunity that will never present back in our life. There's a window of opportunity in the early years of life that is unique because um, the, the need um, of, uh, of uh, let's put it this way, the, the need of energy to learn is so much smaller. The capacity of the brain to absorb, to retain, to discover, to develop will never be at the same level as it is during the early years of life. I am showing you this, this uh, slide, which is a bit sad. In this slide, you have two brains. And these scanners of the brain, um, these are real brains, uh, show the connectivity in the brain. In, uh, in uh, the one on the right, if you see, there is not much red color. The red color uh, shows maximum connectivity, maximum activity of the brain, right? The one on the left side, I will say, is a healthy brain. It's a brave, these are two kids of the same age and more or less, uh, more or less the, same, the same age. The one in the left, there is a lot of red, right? You can see a lot of red. That means that is a very active brain. That is a brain that has been um, well taken care of, meaning some is a brain that has been stimulated that has grown up in an environment where uh, 
and there was a stimulation for the brain to develop. While on the, on the right side is actually a, a child that was um, uh, subjected to institutionalization. It's a kid who was in an orphanage and that was in an orphanage in very early years of life. So institutionalization is the worst thing that can happen to a brain when a, a child is not taken care of by the same caregiver in a long term that is not being continuously stimulated. Children need continuous stimulation. The fact is that if um, a, child, a, a, a brain is not developed in the, in the early years, it will be very difficult to stimulate and to make the foundation of that brain to work uh, well. The right side um, brain with not that uh, much red color basically represents neglect. A child that, can be, that has been abused or neglect that has not been stimulated. Uh, children who are not stimulated, who are not take, uh, cared for, who are not loved in the very early years of life will um, present that type of brain with not much connectivity, but particularly in the front, frontal cortex of the brain, uh, which is basically your front, yeah, your, your forehead, uh, which uh, um, it's the most developed area of the, of the brain. Uh, but it will have a lot of connectivity in the cerebellum, in the area which um, uh, shows basically a stress responses, a stress responses that are uh, activated by neglect, by abuse, by violence. I'd like to show you also the same idea that the, the earlier the better, uh, the earlier we, we uh, work with children, the more effective we will be. Uh, let me show you this slide that shows the plasticity of the brain. What does it mean, the plasticity of the brain? What it means is that the, the brain has a plasticity in the very first years of life that will never be repeated later, later on, because it basically means that you have to, uh, the effort that you have to invest in learning and, con and connecting the brain is, uh, is, is smaller the younger the child is. You can always learn in your life. You can, you can, uh, you can alter the brain. You can actually, uh, and, and I'm not going to talk, to talk today much about uh, uh, epigenetics, but through interaction with environment, you can actually make the, the, the brain much smarter and agile and active. But the older you are, the more effort you have to invest to make any change in the brain. My third message is about the stress. Um, let, me, uh, uh, let me share with you this concept. It's a little bit ar artificial, I, I confess, but there are three types of stress. There, are, there is a, a very healthy stress, uh, a positive stress. When your boss said, you have a deadline, you have to do your work by Friday, you have to present, to do a presentation or, or, or finish an exam or doing something like that by Friday. Well, sometimes that is, is helpful. It's stressful, but it's exciting. It, uh, it motivates you. Uh, uh, it changes the, the chemical, uh, the chemical um, uh, uh, structure of your brain. Uh, when you have a stress, uh, you have uh, the hormones of stress, cortisone, uh, the cortisol, and uh, that is basically activated in the brain. Uh, it, it might raise your heart rate. Uh, uh, it might uh, uh, make you nervous, and that can be positive when it is from time to time. Uh, there is also a tolerable stress that is not necessarily positive, but your brain and your body can cope with. For example, for children, uh, the situation of entering in preschool, entering in kindergarten, or in a daycare, or in primary school, is a very, it's a very, very stressful situation. It really challenge and push them. Uh, uh, but if it is done correctly, uh, it's something that children cope with with no major problems. Some kids may cry, uh, may feel um, a separation, anxiety from their parents, for example, when they enter in, the, in kindergarten. But if the kindergarten is, is a good environment or the primary school is a good environment, the kid will overcome that tolerable stress and actually it will also, you know, could be even uh, positive, right? Uh, but there is a very important one, the third type of stress, which is toxic stress. Toxic stress 
uh, there are two types of toxic stress, prolonged uh, activation of the stress response uh, system. When a child, when a baby particularly, doesn't have protective relationships, when it is subjected to continuous neglect or abuse, uh, when the stress response of the brain is constant, which is means is that if you, if you connect the stress response, you disconnect other areas of the brain that are necessary for development. A kid, a child that is uh, neglected or abused continuously or frequently will be always in, the, in, in a mood of, of, uh, of fight or, 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 or self-defense that will inhibit other areas of the brain that needs to be developed. So the, the child might end up having a very uh, connected um, stress responses in the brain, a very uh, aggressive, uh, it will become a very aggressive uh, child, a very aggressive personality, a very defensive, a very um, not sympathetic, uh, not empathetic uh, personality that is uh, basically ready to fight and fight or, or uh, instead of someone who can develop areas of the brain that are more reflexive, that are more, more, more um, um, the cognitive areas of the brain. Uh, toxic stress is basically what creates a lot of problems in the future of, the, of a child as a human being. There is a lot of uh, studies that connect toxic stress, neglect and abuse in the early years of life with uh, poor outcomes in life, poor educational outcomes, poor economic outcomes, poor social outcomes, a lot of associabilities and problems later in life. I am going to show you just one more video, if you allow me. Uh, yeah. It's going to be on, on an experiment that is going to help you see almost like inside the brain, inside the brain of a child. Uh, some people will think that, you know, it doesn't matter if a child cries a little bit or suffers a little bit, you know, because we are so resilient. But the early years of life uh, are very subtle and fragile. Uh, I forgot to, ask, to, to mention the other type of toxic stress, which is, can be not prolonged in child, but very, very uh, dramatic. Like, for example, when a child uh, loses, a, a, loses a, a parent or is subjected to a, a, a traumatic event of violence. Anyways, let me show you this, uh, this uh, experiment, which will, if you follow the experiment, and I'm sure all, our, all the participants of this, uh, of this uh, seminar are going to be very empathetic, they will, they will feel the pain of a child that is not being stimulated, that is, is not being taken care of. Let me stop the sharing here. And then I am going to go here to this video. Okay. Now you share the screen. This baby is sort of pointing to the place that the door shutters on to the baby. Okay, so we're working to coordinate his emotions and their intention. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? That's crucial. Crucial. And then we, I guess the mother and father, have to knock it so that the baby Both hands up in front of the baby. 
feel the stress of it, they actually may lead to controllable, possible stress symptoms. Something bad happens, but we we can overcome it. That's why we stop the circulation and let everybody play it. The ugly part is when you don't give your child any chance to get back to the good life. There's no respite. You're just stuck. Yeah. I, Oscar? Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm typing, yeah. I'm writing my questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to continue with the presentation, but I think for me, this, um, uh, this video represents the essence of what I want to share with you. Unfortunately, the doctor who is talking in that, in that video is a very optimistic person. And he talks about normalcy as if every child receives the attention and the affection that she or he deserves. Mm -hmm. We need to be aware that that is often not the case and that children are often left neglected or abused or not taken care of, which creates damage, creates real damage in the brain that in some cases can be even irreparable, that you cannot repair, you cannot bring back. I'm thinking, I'm talking to you from Jordan, where we have 3 million refugees from Palestinians to the different waves of Iraqis, uh, obviously hundreds of thousands of Syrians. We have uh, um, also Yemenis, uh, mm -hmm. some of them coming from the recent wars in Yemen or in Sudan. In those households, uh, it's very easy to think that there are problems of stress that are going to affect the capacity of the parents themselves or also the teachers and the caretakers to take care, to, uh, to, 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 to pay the attention that the children deserve and need to develop healthy brain. And that is going to have a huge impact on the life of those children forever. Uh, I'm sure you deal with the same problems also in Turkey. I am mm -hmm. aware that you also have uh, hundreds of thousands of refugees. Um, uh, over but, 5 million. <laughs> over 5 million. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, so you also have a huge country, but it also, even not thinking about refugees, you can think about also of the slums or areas where there is uh, ch there are children that live in households where there is no enough stimulation, where there is a lot of stress in their families because they don't have job or they have economic problems or they have family problems, etc., cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Those have impacts that perpetuate in history and almost is a cycle of, of um, a risk for a cycle of underdeveloped or unhealthy brains. I will say, yes, my, my last point, um, now that I, I explained to you a little bit of how the brain works, what is a, a healthy development of the brain how important it is to have interactions with the child, a continuous interaction in the child that is going to make possible this between 750 to 1 million new connections uh, in the brain of a, of a child, of a baby or of a toddler in the early years of life. Uh, and also, which are the risks of not having those interactions? The need for those environments that are conducive to learning, conducive to, to healthy development are very complex. Uh, you probably as professionals on early childhood development are going to have 
influence in some of the areas of the environment of the child. But we need to understand that we have to work together as a society to create those environments. Children need to have early education from the very early years of life, waiting until primary school is in many cases too late. It's never too late if it's a good, uh, it's a good um, you know, purpose, but it is in a way it is to learn because it is much easier to start educating children earlier through play, play-based education which will stimulate all this interconnection. But it's not only about education, it is also about the protection in their families and in their communities, the connection that the, particularly parents and, 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 and close uh, attachments to the children will help um, uh, to develop. Uh, and other things that are very important, for example, health and nutrition. We know that in the, in the three first years of life, 80% of all the nutrients that a, a child um, ingests, all the, uh, the nutrients, the good elements of the food uh, that a baby takes, goes to, to, feed, to, to feed, to nourish only one organ in the body, which is the brain. The brain needs a huge amount of energy, basically, to create all these connections. Mm -hmm. So poor diets are a, a real drug for healthy development of the brain. And probably more importantly is uh, stimulation and care from the families and also protection. Children who live in uh, households that are uh, where they suffer neglect or abuse, where they witness violence. Witnessing violence, some people will say, will think, and this is very common, that children, uh, it doesn't matter if you scream in front of a, a, of a child because they will forget, they will not remember uh, the violence that had been witnessed, uh, that a child could witness. But in fact, it's the opposite. The impact of witnessing violence or witnessing no, or not only being subjected or victim to, to violence or neglect, but to witnesses, uh, to witness those, those, um, those acts uh, create enormous amounts of, uh, of stress that leave a real imprint in the, in the brain that really have nefarious consequences to the development of the brain. So we need early childhood development, as you well know, is a little bit of all the areas combined to create these environments around the child, particularly education, protection, health, nutrition, and care and stimulation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it there. I can, we can, uh, because I think this is the base, and then we can interact with some questions. Uh, and uh, Dr. Roska, maybe. You